So good to see you this morning. Ah, I'm on now, I think. Good. <laughs> Great. And uh, a special welcome to you as well if you are listening online. The reason that was such a weird wave is because I'm holding a pick in my hand at the same time. Uh, if you don't know me, if you're new and listening uh, online, my name is Nathan Drover. I am the lead pastor here at Perth Andover Baptist Church, along with a team of pastors. If you are wa watching online and you would like to connect with us, uh, we would love to connect with you. So just shoot me off an email at Nathan at PerthAndoverBaptist.com, and I would love to be in contact with you that way. If you're in person, just as a reminder, if you're not up on stage, then we do ask that you wear a mask at all times during the service while you're in the building this morning. Uh, thank you for doing that. But we can sing now, so that's exciting. So uh, please join us in singing when we sing. As our call to worship this morning, I want to read out Revelation chapter 1, verses 12 to 16. So I'll get it awkwardly around my guitar here. It's a bit tricky handling everything. All right. Uh, so just as a bit of context, John, the author of Revelation, is on an island of uh, Patmos, and he's told to write a letter to the seven churches and the things that he sees, and then uh, he turns to see the voice that was speaking to him, and this is what he sees. And on turning, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace. And his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. And his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. Now the neat thing about this is that at the very beginning, he sees seven lampstands. And later on, at the end of chapter 1, we're told that the seven lampstands are the seven churches. And Jesus, who he's seeing here, who he's describing, is seen among the lampstands. The point of this is that this Jesus, the one he's describing, who has a face that's shining like the sun, is in their midst. He is among the churches. He is with the churches. And now we can't, you know, you're looking up here, and no one's face is shining like this, no one's, uh, you know, eyes are flaming like fire or feet burnished bronze, but we can't see him, but the reality is still true for us today. The same Christ, the same one whose face shines and eyes flame is among us right here, right now. So that's our call to worship. We worship the Christ who is in our midst and the God who is present with us today. Hey, I'll invite you to stand for the first song. Uh, hoping you know this really fun, maybe a little bit older song, but we'll see. <laughs> oh, I will love you, Lord, always, not just for the thing you've done for me and I will praise you all my days not just for the change you've made in me but I'll praise you for you are holy Lord and I lift my hands but you are worthy of so much more for you are awesome God serve you Lord always for you are my strength when I am weak and I will never be afraid for you are my rock and you protect me but I'll praise you for you are holy Lord and I'll lift my hands but you are worthy of so much more for you are awesome god of the nations lion of judah rock of the ages alpha omega worthy of all praise more than these 
Let us just pray uh, together. Father, I thank you for your presence with us uh, through your spirit. I pray that through this worship you would be glorified, that you would be honored, and that our hearts would be set towards you with affection and love. So we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm through the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are Comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, Fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross when Jesus died, the death of Christ I live. No in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then Bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. For I am his, and he is mine, bought with the precious blood of Christ. in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can hide me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand in 
My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood, Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gives way He then is all my hope and stay On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand When he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Good morning. So for some announcements, uh, for birthdays this week, Christina Bolstrich has a birthday. Christina's out west. We hope you're watching and we wish you a very happy birthday on Tuesday. Tonight, uh, the youth group will meet here at the church from 6.30 to 8. And the young adults meet at the Parsonage and that's from 8 to 9. And that's ages 18 to 25. Our Easter services, we're going to have a Good Friday service as well as Easter Sunday. Both of those will be at 10.30 in the morning. We hope many of you can come out and uh, bring a friend. We don't like to talk about money, but we are going to update you on the mortgage. And the mortgage is, the balance owing is uh, 600, or sorry, I wish. <laughs> 68292 so this Easter, as what we've done before, we take a special Easter offering, and that money goes directly on the principal, which will really help us out. So pray about that, and whatever you feel you could give, we would uh, put it towards the mortgage. A reminder that at church at 10 o'clock on Sunday mornings, there is a pre-service prayer, and our goal is to um, pray about the service, to cover our service in prayer, and for those that we know that need it in our community. So if you'd like to come out and join us in prayer, we'd love to have you. Also, our Cards and Gifts ministry is back up and, and a little more active than what we've been. And so we need help. We need your help. So if you know of anybody that has a special birthday, anniversary, or if anyone is sick or in need of encouragement, please let Pastor Nathan know so that we can support you. The group's coming up. Uh, Sheila's care group meets every Monday at 12 at the church. Grief Share uh, is every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. now at the church. So that's a bit of a ch change from Wednesday to Tuesday. 
Rodney's Care Group meets again on March 29th. That's Monday at 7 at the church. And Marianne's Care Group is Friday, March 26th on Zoom. And if you would like to join in on that and you don't know much about Zoom, just contact Pastor Nathan and he'll help you out. Thanks. Well, good morning, everyone. I don't know about you. Oh, if there's kids that want to go, you're welcome to. Isn't it nice outside today? I hope uh, yesterday I pulled out our uh, barbecue and I still had propane in it, so that was good and we were able to have a nice supper last night and um, kind of fits in with really what I feel like God laid on my heart for this week. Um, We're in kind of an odd, not an odd, a very normal part of life. And I was... Guess, I guess I was meditating on it to some degree uh, this week as I just thought about, we had Christmas and we're coming up on Easter and actually um, we kind of, Pastor Nathan and I switched days, he's going to be speaking next week and, and I was going to speak next week and he was, and anyway we switched and I was just kind of thinking about uh, all of those high points and if you go through the year you probably look at different high points that you experience. Uh, as, certainly as a child, maybe they're a little bit more dramatic than they are when you become uh, an adult, but we all have these points, and we have, you know, Christmas, and we have Easter, and we have Thanksgiving. These are like moments that we think about, and certainly in terms of church life, we, we produce, you know, for Christmas, we would have a, a Christmas program of some kind, most often. Um, maybe not when we're dealing with a global pandemic, but typically speaking, we have some kind of uh, Christmas program, or maybe Easter, it's a, it's a special Sunday where, where we do something special, even this year. Um, I was remembering last year, I think I did our Good Friday service from my living room. Uh, (laughs) I'm pretty sure I set it up, and uh, we were looking back at it, because I had a plant that, um, it was a money tree, and my cats had basically killed it. They kept jumping on it and breaking branches off. So there's, so we we looked back at the video and there's, you know, four or five leaves on it. Thankfully, I was like, I'm going to make this plant my mission. I'm going to save it. And now it's like this tall and it's got all these leaves on it. It's pretty cool to see. But we have those high points in church life, but even in our own life, we have birthdays, we have anniversaries, we have those celebrations. But really, if we break it down, most of our life is not spent in those high exciting, memorable moments. Most of our life isn't spent on vacation at some faraway place. Most of our life isn't spent celebrating. Most of our life isn't spent, and and the flip side of that is, you know, we, we have moments in our life that are very low. Maybe we've dealt with illness, or maybe there's been job loss, or maybe there's been different kinds of things, and we have these highs and lows and these big moments in life, but truthfully, most of our life is not made up of the really high or the really low. Most of our life is made up of the space between those moments, the day-to-day sort of things. And as I was preparing for this week, I looked at it, March 21st. March 21st, I think that's the date today. Unless I got it wrong. (laughs) I'm pretty sure that it's the 21st today. And this is really just a normal Sunday in March, by all accounts. It's, the weather's nice, so that's good. I think we're all pretty happy about that. But there's nothing spectacular about today. This is one of those Sundays that just kind of rolls along and as, as church leadership you sit down and you look at the calendar and you see all the dates that you know are coming that are important dates that you have to prepare for. Christmas, Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day and you've got all of these things coming but March 21st, just a normal Sunday in March, isn't really one that stands out on the calendar. Just like March 24th, unless it's your birthday, probably isn't a day that really means much to you, or, or some other random day. It just doesn't mean a lot. You're not anticipating it, yet most of our life is spent in those days. So as I was thinking about this, God was sort of like um, 
there, there was a lot of different things that I, I feel like God was sort of not throwing at me because I didn't feel like I was being bombarded, but just a lot of different ways to kind of look at this, but to understand that those normal everyday things, the everyday part of life is so valuable because it's what happens in that everyday part of life that really adds up to the essence of who we are. It adds up to the fullness of the life that we live. Uh, the, the fullness of our life and the fullness of our relationship with God and the fullness of our relationship with each other isn't just built in those moments of super highs or super lows, but it's made up of our everyday life. One of the things that I like to do is I like to watch renovation shows on TV. Does anybody else like to watch renovation shows? Um, there's this show that we've been watching a lot lately called Hometown. I don't know if anybody's seen it. I think that's what it's called, right? Hometown? Yeah. Uh, it's a husband and wife who live in this town. I think it's in Tennessee maybe or uh, anyway. And, and they've, they're going through their town and people are buying houses and they fix the houses up for them and they, they take all these old historic houses. And I guess part of the reason that I like it is because we live in a real old house. Uh, so I'm always kind of looking at it for tips and um, uh, things like that. But as they go through these renovation shows, they show what the house used to look like, and they do the renovations, and they show the house at the end, and it's this massive transformation. It's, it's changed from something that maybe is falling apart or something that uh, needs uh, work on the foundation or work on the plumbing or electric. Maybe it's all. Maybe it's just in bad shape altogether and the floors are cracking and the ceilings are falling down and things are not good. And then they show the house at the end and they've totally refinished it and they've totally remodeled it. And it's brand, it looks brand new and it's so beautiful. And from the starting point to the end point, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in the middle. And they kind of show you a little bit here and there, but they don't really show you all that goes on to get from the start to the finish. And it, this paralleled as I was thinking about how, you know, we have Christmas and then we have Easter and now we're in the middle. We're in the middle. We have, we have the, the moment where we celebrate the birth of Christ and we have the moment where we celebrate uh, Christ giving his life for us and then we're in that middle phase and that rolls into my thinking of we're, we're kind of in a normal everyday thing and there's this middle between the house that's, not, uh, that's falling apart and the finished product but the real work, the real important things happen in the middle. And here we are in, in, in a middle Sunday in the space between. And I was, uh, this is the passage of scripture that I wanted to use today. I let my phone shut off on me. Sorry about that. Uh, I tried to save it here. Okay. It's from Psalms. And I think we probably have it up there. Yeah. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it, labor in vain. And when I watch these building shows, they kind of cut out the middle part. But if you've ever done a project, you understand that the things that you do, you won't get the product at the end if the stuff in the middle doesn't matter. And maybe we're in the middle, and maybe you feel like you're in the middle. And, and I think in a lot of ways, we all are. I think we all have things in front of us that maybe it's a, maybe you're looking forward to something. And it's a big event. Maybe it's a retirement, maybe it's a wedding, maybe it's a whatever it is. But you're looking forward to something. But we're in the middle now. We're not there yet. I started to think about what it means to be in the middle. There's so many analogies that I could use. We could use the sports analogy because there is a huge difference between learning the game and making the team and winning a championship. You can use a professional analogy. There's a, lot, there, there's a lot that goes on between getting a job and then retiring from the job. You can use a, a personal analogy, a, a couple different ones. There's a lot that should go on between the first time you meet someone and the time you get married to them. There's also a lot that goes on for the rest of the marriage, the day-to-day -day things. In school, there's a lot that happens. We, we only celebrate, you know, the first day of school. We get pictures, first day of school. And then we celebrate graduation. We don't really celebrate 
April in seventh grade. It's not, there's nothing to celebrate, but what takes place in those middle times is important. That's when you're learning. That's when you're understanding. That's when you're growing. That's when you're developing. And most of our life is spent in the space between. In the space between is when we develop habits. The space between is when we learn things. It's when we grow. It's when we change. It's when we are faithful and have the opportunity to be faithful. The space between is even the time when we rest. Have you ever had an experience where you had a celebration? And I think this is, many people have experienced this. Maybe it's a a, a wedding or maybe it's a funeral or maybe it's, it doesn't really matter what it is. Maybe it's an anniversary, maybe it's a birthday party. But when it ends, you just have to rest. You just, have to, you, just, you just have to catch your breath. You just have to calm down. All of those things happen in the middle of these big highs or these lows that we experience in life. And there's ups and there's downs and there's things we're looking forward to. But right now, there's nothing special about March 21st. Except right now is the day in the middle. And the middle is of great value. And I have three, three points for us this morning. Number one, the first is this. God is with us in the middle. So I think sometimes we have this thought that the only times that matter are the big moments. But the truth is, this Sunday is just as important as Christmas and as Easter Oh, we remember on those days important events, but they're not more important to God because what's important to Him is you, and you're here today. You're here right now. So this day is just as important. This day means just as much. And the passage of Scripture that we're going to look at, if I can get this going, God is with you in the middle is from Jeremiah 18. It says this, the word came to Jeremiah for the Lord, arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will let you hear my word. So I went down to the potter's house. Did I have that right? Yeah. And he was working at his wheel, and the vessel he was making of clay was spoiled in the potter's hands, and he reworked it into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to do so. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter has done? declares the Lord, behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. This goes on to talk about what God is going to do and what he's going to work, but what we have to understand is that he's with us. The, the, the passage of scripture that Jesus leaves the disciples with in Matthew, he says this, uh, I think I have that in the slides too, he says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The potter is working always. He's not just saying, oh, I'm going to wait until the day I need a cup, and then hopefully I have one. I'm going to wait until the day I need a bowl, and then hopefully I have a bowl available. I'm not going to wait until the day I need a house, and then just hope I have one available. He's building us. He's molding us. And the middle is when that takes place. The middle can be a strange time. It can be very unusual because of the ups and the downs, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but I I think it's something that everyone experiences. There are times when you uh, set, maybe we have a front porch in our house, and it's kind of the place where stuff gets put so we can deal with it later. (laughs) Maybe there's company coming, and uh, we've got stuff on the table, and we've got things, so we just take it all, and we put it on the porch. Put it in, actually, it's more of a sun, sunroom or a breezeway. I don't know what you call it anyway. We put stuff there. Every once in a while, I decide, all right, it's time to clean this up. The kids' boots are there. Their book bags are there. The ski pants are there. I've got bookshelves, and we've got all kinds of stuff there. I keep all the basketball stuff that we have. Everything's there. So I start cleaning it up. And about 45 minutes after I start cleaning it up, it's so much more messy than when I started. It's a huge mess. Sometimes that happens in the middle. Sometimes in the middle we start to feel like this is a mess. What's really going on here? What's really happening? We see the story of the potter working the clay, and it doesn't work out quite right, so he has to start over. 
there was a mess, there was a mistake, there was something that happened. So the potter just, he, he, he doesn't just throw the clay away, he, he starts, starts working on it again. And we're in that process, in the normal everyday thing. We're not a finished product yet. Paul says, I haven't arrived yet. I, not that I've gotten there yet. I'm pressing towards the mark. Well, that's where we all are. We're kind of in the middle, pushing towards the mark. And that's where we get worked on. And sometimes the renovations make things more messy. But sometimes the middle, being in the middle, while it can be messy, other times being in the middle is almost boring. I think back, I don't know why I think of this often, but I think back to how boring I thought third grade was. Now, I, my third grade teacher was one of my most favorite teachers. In fact, I still, I actually would call her and her husband my friends today. <laughs> I've been to their house on several occasions and spent time with them, and sometimes I even stop and just talk to them. If, you know, they, they live in the middle of town, and sometimes I see them, and I'll just pull in and, and talk to them. But for whatever reason, I thought it was so boring. And I think a lot of kids think that about school, not just third grade. <laughs> I probably thought other grades were boring, too, but for some reason in my mind, I, could, I just I think back to it. And it seemed, sometimes it seemed like the week took 14 days. It took so long to get through a week. As an adult, I really have never felt that. It seems to fly by pretty quickly. But as a child, it seemed to take forever. And I think there's times in the middle where things seem a little boring. That doesn't mean nothing's happening. It just means it's day-to-day life. But actually, that's where most of the stuff happens. Most of life happens in the middle. And it's an individual thing because no matter what the middle looks like for you, no matter what part of the middle you're in, maybe you're in a part where you're being worked, maybe you're in a part where you're being stretched, maybe you're in a part where you're being developed, but maybe you're in a part where it it doesn't seem like there's much happening. It doesn't matter which part you're in, it's important because what it's happening is God is building you for a purpose. He's leading you to a place. And it's individual for all of us. And Jesus says this in Matthew, I am with you always. I always use this, I probably used it here before, because it's so easy for us to overlook the things that are with us. You probably haven't thought much about the communion table this morning. There's nothing set up on it. There's nothing really happening. It's been here the whole time. We didn't bring it in. I'm pretty sure it's been here the whole time. (laughs) But probably you didn't really notice it. Didn't really pay attention to it. Doesn't mean it wasn't here. It's been here the whole time. It's what were we focusing on? That's really what happens with our relationship with God in the middle. And it's one of the reasons why it's important for us to know that even in the middle, even if we're not at this great high moment, when we're just in our everyday normal life, he is with us. It's important to focus on the fact that he is with us in the middle. The second thing that's important to understand is this. He is working in the middle. In 2 Corinthians, let's go. Yeah, 2 Corinthians. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. And this is the passage in verse 18. For we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. The things that are seen are transient or they are temporal, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Eternal. The things that are not seen. We can't always see what God is doing in the middle, but I promise you, he's at work. And maybe there's something you've been praying for, Maybe there's, been, maybe there's something you've been believing for. Maybe there's something that's been on your heart. Maybe there's something you've been working for or something you're looking towards. And you feel like, man, God, just what's going on? I'm stuck in the middle. He's working in the middle. See, the, the, the thing is, the, the, the home improvement shows, they take the old house and they change it to the new house. But, you know, they never tell you really how long it takes. Restoring things takes time. Fixing things takes time. And it's true with houses, but it's true with us. 
If we have struggles in our life, if we have issues in our life, if we have things that we're going through, sometimes it takes time to work through them. Time. He's working in the middle, but we might not understand it. I am not mechanically inclined. I, I don't really know a lot about vehicles. I've learned a little bit because I've had vehicles that broke down on me. So I've learned what my radiator does and I've learned what different things do. But I, I, I don't know a lot about vehicles. And if I watched someone work on my vehicle, I would have no idea what they were doing. Because I don't know. I, I just don't know. I remember one time I had a, a friend, he's a mechanic, and I needed him to fix a light bulb in my vehicle. It was like in the dash. You know how you're, at nighttime it lights up and it shows you the, the numbers and stuff? Well, it was broken, and so I couldn't really see anything. I couldn't see to, to change the car from drive to reverse. I couldn't see uh, the, what time it was. All those lights were out, and it was just, it, it, I didn't like it. So I said, hey, is there any way you can check and see how to fix that light. And he said, oh, sure. And he got in there, and he had this bar, and he stuck it in, and he started popping stuff off with the bar. Now, I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, is this guy just trashing my car or what? Like, I, I don't understand. Is it, he's going to rip it all apart, and I'm going to be left with nothing. Well, he pulled it all apart. He reached back in. There was a little thing. He fixed it. The light came on. He popped everything back in place, tapped it with a hammer. Everything was perfect. When in the middle of that, I didn't understand what was going on. It seemed to me like he was just breaking everything. He didn't break anything. I've broken more things on my car than he has. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. See, when you know what you're doing, you can just go and do it. But if you don't know, if you, if, if, you're not, if you don't understand, and truthfully, we don't always understand how God is working. We don't always understand what he's doing. We don't always understand where his hand is at work and, and how he's moving things and, and changing things and positioning things. We don't understand all of that. So there's a moment in the middle where we have to say, God, I'm just going to trust you. I haven't got there yet. I haven't figured it all out. I've, uh, I'm in the middle, and it's just day-to-day -day life, but God, I'm trusting that you're working. And I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep being faithful, and I'm going to trust that you're working. In the middle is when he works. It's not just these moments, these big moments. I believe that God can speak to us on March 21st. He can speak to our hearts. He can encourage you. It doesn't have to be Thanksgiving to be thankful. It doesn't have to be Christmas to celebrate Christ's birth. It doesn't have to be Easter to remember his resurrection because all of those things are so important even in the middle. Maybe you could say especially in the middle. Because when we remember those things, that's when we grow and we develop a relationship with him that's truly meaningful. The last thing I wanted to talk about was this, God sees the end. I forget how I put it up here. He sees the end result in the middle. We go back to Jeremiah and we think about this potter who's sitting at the wheel. Has anybody ever tried to use a pottery wheel before? I did one time. I was not good at it. <laughs> when I was in high school, we had an art class and we had a pottery wheel, so everybody got to take a turn on it. And you try to push it and you push it, and, and, and it was hard to, to do. It, it wasn't an easy thing to make a bowl on a pottery. If you see it on TV, it looks so easy. It's because this person has been likely doing it their whole life and they just know how to do it. But when you try to do it, it it's hard. It's not an easy thing to to make the bowl and make it look good. But we think back to this potter and the clay. In the story, the potter clearly has an idea of what the vessel should be. The potter sees the end. It's one of the things that I see on some of these home improvement shows that I enjoy watching, is that the contractor, the carpenter, the, they can see the end. Maybe the people buying the house can't really see the end. 
They can't really walk into a house that's falling down and has holes in the floor, and they can't really see, oh, this is what it could look like. But, 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 but the builder, the one building the house, has a vision for what it should look like. And maybe it only looks like a few walls, and maybe it only looks like a shell of a house, and maybe it's not finished, or maybe it's not complete, but if you go to a construction site, there's someone there who can see the building before it's even finished. I heard this story of a sculptor, and I don't know if this is a true story, I don't even know who it was about. I feel like maybe it was said of like Michelangelo, or one of the sort of classic artists, who uh, had gotten a, a piece of granite that they were going to uh, chisel an elephant out of. They were going to carve an elephant. And somebody said, well, how do, you, how do you make it look like an elephant? And the artist said, well, I, I just chip off all the pieces that don't look like an elephant. Only the artist can do that. <laughs> if you can't see it, you can't do it. Well, the good news is, in the middle of what we're going through, in the middle of your life, on March 21st, a Sunday that comes between Christmas and Easter, God sees the end. He, he has a vision for your life. He has a vision for your situation. He has a vision for the circumstance you're going through. He knows what's happening. He's working in the middle. But it's not just that he's at work. He sees the end result. He sees what the potential is. He sees what, what's going on. He, he understands. He sees what the finished product looks like. He's at work in the middle. But he's not just working aimlessly. He's working for a purpose. He's working because you have a purpose. Yeah, it's the middle of March. And yeah, I'm super happy it's a nice day outside. And March Madness is on TV, which is exciting because I like basketball. Maybe you don't like basketball. That's fine. You don't have to watch it. Uh, well, you might have to watch it. I think it's on every channel. But, <laughs> uh, but it's just a normal day. But God's still at work. And tomorrow's Monday. Tomorrow you don't even come to church. Guess what? He's still working. And then Tuesday, same thing. Wednesday, same thing. Because every day of our life, although it seems normal, although it's the space between the big events, God's still at work, and he's still changing us, and he's still helping us grow, and he's still developing us, and he can still minister to us, and he can still give us vision of, 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 of things that we can do, and ways that we can help, and ways that we can love people, and care for our community, and all of these things happen not just at the big events. But they happen day to day. It's why we support our food bank, not just at Christmas time. That's great at Christmas time. We want to support them at Christmas time. But people need to eat more than just at Christmas time. It's why we pray every week in church, not just at the holidays when there's lots of people around. Because Every day matters. Every day matters. In fact, that space between is when God really works on us. It's when we show our faithfulness, and it's when he shows his faithfulness. Because he's faithful to us always, and he's working on us, and he, he's bringing us somewhere, and he's leading us somewhere, and it's in those middle points, it's in the, in the space between when he forms the clay. You don't, you, you don't start with a ball of clay one day, and end up as a finished bowl the next. In God's hands, he works us, he forms us into the vessel that he wants us to be. I actually find great comfort in that, knowing that he's the one doing it, because I feel like if I was the one forming myself, if I was the one trying to, trying to form myself into something functional and something that was useful, I would end up with the same thing I ended up with in high school, which was a bowl that sort of looked like, sort of like a mix between some sort of pouring device and an ashtray. <laughs> sort of wobbly on one side and really shallow, and you couldn't use it for anything. But in the hands of the potter, he forms the clay and he makes the bowl. 
and he uses it, and it is exactly what he wants. I believe that God has a purpose for all of us in this life, and even though we're in the middle days, he still can speak to us. He still can help us. He still can work us. So we go back to this passage of Scripture. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it. He builds the house. And I guess the, the, the sort of sum of all of these things that I was just all week, I just kept writing notes down. So my notes are a little all over the place. I mean, I, I managed to put them into one sort of succinct <laughs> outline. But the, the thing is, every day is a day that we can let God work on us. Every day is a day that God can speak to us. Every day is a day. It, it doesn't have to be these big events, and we don't have to spend our time waiting. All of, uh, it, it's going to happen every day. We can look to him, and we can trust him. He's with us. We don't have days that we're alone. We don't have days that he's not with us. We don't have days that he's not working on us. And we don't have days where we don't have a purpose. Because he's working. He's bringing us to our purpose. Let's pray together this morning. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, my prayer is today that you would build the house. Not just this house, not just this building, but actually our own lives, who we are, that you would build this house, me, and that each of us would allow you to build us, to form us, to shape us, just as you said that you are the potter and the clay to the children of Israel, Lord, in our lives, you are the potter and we are the clay, Lord, and I pray that you would help us to allow you to form us, to build us. Lord, we don't want to put work into it in vain. We want to have the finished product, not what we want, but what you want. So God, I thank you again for your word. I thank you that you are with us, even in the middle, even in the normal, everyday things of life. You are with us, and we are never alone, and that you have a purpose for us, and a purpose and a plan for our life. And I thank you again that you are with us. Lord, I pray that this word will speak to our hearts, that it will be sown deep into us, and that it will produce fruit, fruit that says, even though I'm in the middle, even though this is just day to day, that doesn't mean that you're not with me, that doesn't mean you can't do great things in my life, and that doesn't mean that you aren't working on me, Lord. So let me hear your voice and follow where you lead. We thank you again for your word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. We're going to pray for these things for the people that, in, um, that are on our list <clears throat> that are sick or in hospital, that God will be, that they will know that God is with them, that God is working, and that God sees the end result. So we have um, Erin in the hospital. Um, so her surgery that was scheduled for this past week has been postponed, and they're hoping it will be happening on Tuesday. John Everett is home from the hospital. Adam Corbett is recovering from heart surgery at home. Jen Hansen um, in Calgary has finished a lot of radiation treatments, but now has other treatments ahead. We'll pray for um, little Declan, Jess McClellan's son, and June Allward's brother, Winston, and his wife, Noella. Travis Adams waiting for heart surgery. The relatives of Jocelyn Green and the relatives of Alan Spencer, and there's some overlap there in those families. Sandy Crabb, Kelsey Cummings is home from the hospital now in Ottawa. Sheila's sister Sue is doing better. Arlene Foster has a friend we'll pray for. We'll pray for others in our community who are sick, some who are struggling with mental health. We'll pray for those in the manor. For people who are grieving, we're going to pray um, for various families that God knows, and also for the family of Linda D. at Amazing Grace Church in Limestone Siding. We'll pray about things about the pandemic and the vaccine. Um, when we pray for the world, we're going to remember the war in Syria and the refugees and the ongoing trouble there. We'll think about what happened in the States with the killings of Asian Americans in Atlanta. 
Are there any other prayer requests we need to pray for this morning? Okay, let's go to God in prayer. Our loving God, we thank you for this message this morning, and we thank you for this reminder and these different examples that we can take to heart of how even though things might seem difficult or things might seem ordinary, that you are with us, that you are working, and that you see what lies ahead. We know that in all these things you are working for good, good that you understand and good that we will come to know. So we pray that all these people that we've mentioned who are sick will know these things, that they will see you at work, that they will know your comfort by your Holy Spirit and by the hands and feet of your church. We pray for Aaron in the hospital. We pray for John Everett at home, who's been in the hospital a little bit off and on. We pray for Adam Corbett recovering at home. We pray for our dear Jen Hansen, dealing with radiation and other cancer treatments in Calgary. We pray for little Declan and Jess and his whole family. We pray for June Allward's brother Winston and his wife Noella. We pray for Travis Adams. We pray for the family members of Jocelyn Green and for Alan Spencer's family members. We pray for Sandy Crabb, for Kelsey Cummings, for Sheila Cummings' sister Sue and for the friend of Marlene Foster. Father, we pray for all of these people that you would touch their bodies and their minds, that you would remind them that you are with them, that you are at work, and that you have a future. We, we just pray for your comfort to be with them. We pray for those who are in the manor and the villa and those who are shut in at home, that they would know these things too, that they would know your presence and see that you are active and working in their lives. We pray th for those who are struggling with mental health and others in our community who are very sick. We know of many names, Father, that we haven't mentioned now, and we pray for your comfort to be with them. We pray for those who are grieving. We pray for those in our, in our church congregation. We pray for the family of Linda D. We pray for those who are suffering sorrow, recent sorrow and um, sorrow from some time ago. This grief comes in waves and we just pray for you, you to make your presence known to those who are grieving. We think about this pandemic and we are so thankful, Father, for our good numbers here in New Brunswick and in some places around the world. We thank you for the vaccine supply that seems to be increasing rather than slowing down. We just thank you for the good numbers about the vaccine. We thank you that the provincial government in New Brunswick seems to have a plan that we can understand now with 85 plus and now 80 plus and different um, sectors. We just pray that you would bless the distribution of the vaccine in our province so that things would work smoothly, that people would be vaccinated quickly, that there would be very few side effects. We pray for the leaders Dr. Russell and the other leaders who are constantly needing to make adjustments as they get new information. We just pray that our population would continue to support our leaders in public health, that they would be open and flexible to change as we need to change. We pray that you would give them wisdom so that they would know how to protect those who are most vulnerable. We pray that you would help us all to continue on doing what we need to do until we come to an end of this pandemic. And while we know that New Brunswick numbers are pretty good, we know that we all have loved ones in other places and that there are places around the world where there's great suffering and loss of life, ongoing sickness. And we pray that you will end the pandemic soon by whatever means you would use. We pray for our church. We thank you for the people that are mentioned not too many this week who are having birthdays, but we pray that you would bless them. We pray for Nathan and Sabrina and for Sheila and for Andrew, and we pray in each case that you would bless them with good health, physical health and mental health, that you would prosper their ministry, that you would open their eyes to needs, that you would bring people around to support and encourage them, and you would empower them to do your work. We pray for our youth groups, that you would bless them and help the leaders to see to make connections and to minister to them. 
We thank you that Easter is coming. We are in these in-between days, but we see a joyful weekend coming where we will remember what you did. Um, you sent your son who died but then came back to life and defeated death. We pray that you would help us to think about this Easter weekend as a time of hope and that you would, um, that you would help others in the community who need to know your goodness to reach out to other Christians or to the church or directly to you so that they could know you this Easter season. Father, we are a church in our community. We're imperfect people and we love and care for our community. Won't you please continue to work in us? It's hard sometimes to see what, what's going on in our church with these times of pandemic where not so many people are at services and we can't have all the gatherings that we have enjoyed. But as these last, um, these next few months with maybe um, more freedoms come, may you, may you work in our church. We know that you are working in these strange days. We pray again that we would see you working, that you would, we would trust that you are with us, you are working in individuals and in us as a church, and that you have things for us to do, things for people for us to reach, and um, we just pray that you would help us to answer um, your call to us in this community. And finally, Father, we pray for things in the world. We pray for all those in the world who need Jesus in our families, in our friend circles, in our community, and around the world. And we pray that all these people would reach toward you for the goodness, the salvation you provide. We pray for those in our community and beyond who are living in homes that put them in danger. We pray that you would provide safety for those pe people who are in danger, and that you would open eyes to those who can do something to help. We think about Syria and how it's been 10 years now since their dreadful war, and we thank you for the families that this community was able to um, welcome as refugees, and we pray for them in Fredericton, that you will bless them, that you will prosper them, that you will draw them to yourself, and we pray that you would bring stability to Syria. We pray that your goodness would be known there. We think about this terrible killing, this massacre in the States with Asian American women being targeted. And we mourn for those women and their families and the other victims. And Father, we, we, seem, we see so often mass killings in the States and here, and we see racism and violence and prejudice, and, and we even hear that the killer in this case might have claimed to love you and we just don't understand. And we need you to work in ways beyond what we can understand to, to end racism, to change hearts and to, um, to show us what to do, to be part of the battle against this evil. We thank you that on this ordinary day, this lovely sunny day of spring, you are with us and you are working and you see good things ahead. And we pray that you would help us to get on board with what you are doing. We thank you that you are alive and active. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand for the final song.
to a cradle in the dirt. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise for To reveal the kingdom coming, and to reconcile the lost, to redeem the whole creation, you did not despise the cross. For even in your suffering, you saw to the other side, knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake you died. Till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe. For the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored. And the church of Christ was born, and the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel, shall not faint. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. benediction this morning. Uh, let me read uh, what I drew from Andrew's sermon. As you go this week, you will be living your lives in the in-between, between Christmas and Easter, and between Sunday and Sunday. As you live in the space between, know that the potter is building you in the middle. Every day, God is at work. So go, knowing that whether your middle is messy or boring, it is the space where God works on us and is with us. Amen.